So in this lecture we are going to discuss uh, briefly about the Taylor series for complex valued functions. So in real variable functions we can define a Taylor series of some function around a point x0 in the following manner. Let's say we have some coefficient. This an is the coefficient. This is the summation symbol that is indicating that is a, it is written as a polynomial and this a of n and there would be this x minus x0 where x0 is the point of interest and there would be a power of n right and these a of n's are actually nothing but the derivatives of f to the power n that means the n derivative divided by n factorial at the point x0 so we ask that can we do a similar analysis for the complex variables the answer is yes, but to do that, we require that our complex valued function f of z, let's say, is analytic for some z which is equal or less than r. This means we are taking a region and we are saying that our function f of z is analytic throughout this region okay there are no singular points and then we can take a point of interest let's say z0 and we can expand the function around this point in the following manner f of z would be let's write i equals to 0 to infinity let's write b of i z minus z0 to the power i like this and now the question is what is this b what are these b are they analogous to the real variable functions the answer is yes this b of i's will be given by the i derivative of this complex valued function on this point z0 divided by i factorial please don't confuse this small i with the imaginary number and now what we're going to do is that we are going to prove it okay and again we will see that we can use Cauchy's integral formula that we learned in the last lecture we will use that to prove this thing so now comes the proof so first things first from Cauchy's integral formula we know that since our function is analytic within this region f of z and the point of interest is z naught we can write this f of z as or z naught whatever we choose because the point of interest is z naught so f of z naught would be the close control integral 2 pi i over here and there would be this f of psi let's say which is again a dummy variable and there would be psi minus z0 and the integration of psi and this is coming from Cauchy's integral formula right now let us do some algebraic manipulations and for this manipulation what I'm going to do is that I'm going to factor out this psi from here so Oops. So it seems that it's not working properly. Sorry about that. So, as I was saying, I'm going to factor out this psi. And if I do that, we'll have this f of z by psi. And you'll have 1 minus z naught by psi, like this. And that will be psi. Then you'll have 1 by 2 pi i close control integral f of sorry it shouldn't be f of z it should be f of psi oops okay let me rewrite the whole thing so 2 pi i f of psi psi 1 minus z 0 by psi like this okay d psi and this is just 1 minus z 0 by Xi inverse 1 d epsilon. Now, what we are going to do 
is that we're going to expand this guy. Notice that this almost looks like a 1 minus x inverse 1 expansion which is given by this in terms of real variables. So if you write it in a more compact notation this will be something like this. Right? So can we do that for complex variables? Certainly. And the way to prove that would be the following. Let's say we have some s of n of z, a polynomial or a series, whatever you want to call it. This starts from, let's say, j equals to, sorry, n equals to 0 and ends up to infinity and it's given by z of n, right? And then if you consider that this modulus of z is less than 1. Notice that this is analogous to real variable as well, where x has to be less than 1. So that's why we are saying that this modulus of z is less than 1. And then what we can do, we can consider the quantity s of n of z minus z s of n. And we can easily see that this is just equals to 1 minus z of n plus 1, right? If you just put these things down. And hence, we will find that s of n of z is equals to 1 minus z of n plus 1 divided by 1 by z, like a geometric series and stuff. And in the limit n goes to infinity, this z to the power n plus 1 will go to what? It will go to 0. Why? Because z it's the modulus of z itself is less than 1, right? So when z goes to infinity, this part will go to 0. So limit n goes to infinity, this will become just this z to the power n plus 1 would be equals to 0 because modulus of z is less than 1. Okay? So what we will have ultimately is that s of n of z is equals to 1 upon 1 by z which is again denoted by this guy over here. So that's what we're going to use over here. So we have this 1 by 2 pi i cross contour integration of f of psi divided by psi. Then we have this summation. We have from n equals to 0 to infinity. We have this z0 by epsilon. And what do we have over here? We have n. And this is d of psi. Since z0 is just a point, what we're going to do is that we're going to take out this z0 to the power n. We can always take that out right and we're going to distribute the power inside z0 and epsilon i mean sorry xi and finally what we'll have is that 1 upon 2 pi i integration of f of xi by xi n plus 1 and there will be a z0 times n or to the power n sorry not times and xi like this and finally what we have is that z0 to the power n 2 pi i integration of f of xi xi n plus 1 d xi right okay now let's uh, consider the following is that since we have this this one over here that is this relation you can see that this 1 upon 2 pi i and the close contour integration of f of xi divided by xi to the power n plus 1 is actually pointing towards the Cauchy integral formula. And here the point of interest is actually 0. Okay. So what do we have at the end of the day? Since this is n plus 1 from Cauchy's integral formula, if you recall the derivative 1, if you have this k derivative then this would be equals to 1 upon 2 pi i there will be a k factorial and there will be this contour integral of okay uh, let's say this is at a point z0 so if this is xi the dummy variable and it will be xi minus z0 to the power k plus 1 right so finally here what you will get is that you will have this z to the power 0 to the power n 
and using the Cauchy's integral formulas derivative modification you will have uh, this k uh, this k factorial over here here it would be the n factorial and it will go downstairs because if you take this k in downstairs over here you have the exact form that you see on the calculation that we are doing so you will have this n factorial and you will have the nth derivative of f evaluated at a point 0 right and notice one thing that we kind of ignored the summation symbol uh, during these calculations sorry about that so uh, let me just quickly take you there is that you see that there is this summation symbol over here and I haven't written any summation symbol but I if you are very formal about this you would actually write the summation symbol over here and then what you would do at this point is that you would interchange this to y because we are expecting this to be a finite thing that is one way to see it even though it's not 100 percent rigorous because there might be uh, cases where the functions that means this series summation will blow up there might be cases there this interchange won't work so this only works if you expect your result to be finite okay so you would put the summation symbol over here I'm sorry not over here because you are summing over n and this n would just uh, be a summation index so n would be over here so this summation symbol would actually come over here outside so it would be n equals to 0 to infinity and after you do that you have this summation symbol over here as well 0 to infinity this guy over here n equals to 0 to infinity and this ultimately looks like a Taylor expansion that you are familiar from the real variable calculus so this is how we can see that the Taylor expansion for the complex variable is as similar as the real variables so let's consider this small example before we finish off uh, let's say our f of z looks like this z plus 2 z minus 2 and we want to expand it about the point 0 so since the Taylor expansion is like the real variable case we can what we can do is that we can write it as n equals to 0 to infinity a of n z of n like this that means we have to write it as a 0 a 1 z a 2 z square a 3 z cube and so on and how do we find these a's pretty simple we just take the derivative of these functions so the first one is the zero derivative that means the function itself and the point of interest is z equals to z equals to zero right so this is just a zero would be f of zero and you have two minus two which is equals to minus one a of one would be the first derivative of uh, this guy f of z and evaluated at point zero so the first derivative would look something like let's say z minus two I take the first derivative on the numerator this is just one then I use the product rule and by the product rule there will be a minus sign there will be z minus two whole square and you'll have a z plus two evaluated at a point z equals to zero so you'll have minus one half and here you'll have this minus thing you'll have a two over here and there will be a four over there so you will have this minus one half minus one half and minus one half that means minus one so on and so forth so this is how you can calculate the coefficients and expand this whole thing so this will be it for today and in the next lecture we are going to see a very important part of complex analysis and that is called the Laurent expansion and this Laurent expansion will actually generalize this Taylor's theorem Thank you.